was David Brazil's brother. Okay? That was Pastor Joe. He's going to introduce that dress song. The birthday boy is going to introduce the birthday song. Amen, amen. Happy birthday Praise to God. all of you. Praise God, everybody. You know how we do it. We we like to extend a, a birthday shout out to all the people that are getting old, all the people that are uh, getting having older. birthdays. And uh, so, you know how we do it. Help us out. Here we go. A one, a two, a one, one two, three. A happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. We're, We're giving you this message, message for the things you do. do. A happy birthday to you. Well, are you 18, 20, or 30? A happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. This is coming from your brothers and your sisters, too. A happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Well, well, we, we hope, hope you have, have a party, party today. today. Now, Praise now, party. Now, we all gather today right here. Going to wish you a happy birthday cheer because another group could not be found. And we would like to greet and start. Throw it down. With happy, happy birthday. birthday. To you. you. Well, we're giving you this message for, for the, the things, things you do. A happy birthday to, to you. you. Yeah, I know I'm with it. I get it. It's my birthday too. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. <laughs> this is coming from the pastors of the whole church too. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Well, well, we, we hope, hope you have, have a party today. today. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. <laughs> God bless you. Praise God. If you wish to partner with Spirit Truth Church, you can in our endeavor to further the kingdom of God, we have two convenient and secure ways for you to do so. Feel free to give a donation by visiting our website at sotcdww.com. Again, please feel free to submit any prayer requests you may have. Or you can download the app Giveify to your mobile device or computer. If using Giveify, search for Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide. If you prefer, you can also donate using a personal check, money order, or cashier's check made payable to Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide. Mail your check to Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide or STCW, PO Box 20894 in El Sobrante, California, 94820. Again, this address is also posted on Facebook under comments. And now I will call on Brother Johnny to give us the offering prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we, we, we thank you, Lord. To, we ask that you bless those that gave today and bless those that had the heart to give but didn't have it, Lord. We pray that you would continue to build your kingdom through these offerings. And Lord, we ask that you continue to bless all of the people that gave. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me take this off here. Unmute. Alrighty, someone. I thought I had unmuted, but it muted me back. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Elwanda. Thank you, uh, Sister Danielle, Brother Johnny. Uh, God bless you for your obedience to serve. Thank you also, Brother Dave, Sister Liz, Liz Minister Dora, for your servant's heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, continue to guide us and lead us into praise, into prayer, and to worship in the name of Jesus. You know, the book of James says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him praise. Amen? To God be the glory. That's what we're here to do right now. You know, Lord, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the remnant, the remnant of saints uh, who come on the Zoom, uh, the Zoom page, the, the, our Zoom church page early, uh, lifting up prayers, lifting up supplications, lifting up thanksgiving, lifting up the prayers, not only for themselves, but for, to, for others. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you. The Holy Spirit ha is using, uh, using them before one o'clock. Before one o'clock, they're right there on the Zoom, in the Zoom church room. Can we call it that? The Zoom church room. They're right there praising and praying to God be the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we really, really, really appreciate those. And now, those of you who are coming at one o'clock, we're grateful to the Lord for you also, for your obedience to want to assemble, assemble, assemble as one with us in the Zoom room. So we're so grateful to God that the Lord has used this time, this technology 
to be able to glorify him because he's a spirit and we are to worship him in spirit and truth and it is the truth that the Lord has assembled you know I can't speak for other churches I can only speak what God has spoken to spirit of true church worldwide that this is the time this is the season that he wants to go out via uh, via the internet that this is something that will stay on and when we're no longer here God will be using this technology so the Lord will leave the 99 to save that one and that one may come online one day it may not be at one o'clock on a Sunday it may be two or three or four years from now and they will see this they will see the worship they will see the praise and then later we're going to bring up the man of God with the word of God that God has given it first to us and then to you so God knows exactly what we're doing what he's doing God knows what he's doing who are we to tell God what to do amen if he says assemble yourself this way that's what we're going to do Unmute and let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Reaching amen. those who would not otherwise, reaching those who will not otherwise be in the, in the building or meet in Fairfield in a physical building. God, but we're here, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this ministry to con continue spreading the good news via technology. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Since you're unmuted, just stay unmuted and let's praise God. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Set the atmosphere, Lord. We want to continually, continually praise you with the fruit of our lips, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. This is our reasonable service, God. Let everything that has breath, you said, praise the Lord. We praise you for waking us up this morning. We praise you for giving us a sound mind and body. We praise you for drawing us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My, 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 my God. My, my, my. Jesus, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for calling us your sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, we love and adore you. We love and adore you, almighty God. We love and adore you, Alpha and Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, the end. We love and adore you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your convincing. Thank you for your convincing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As we mute, let me just say a little about a little something, something about Jesus. I can say a whole lot about Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody who can save us like Jesus. That's why he's our personal savior. There's nobody who we can call on. And he hears our calls and cries, but Jesus, he's the great shepherd. He is our shepherd. We shall not want. He is our shepherd. He is our rock. There is nobody that can deliver us from the wrath to come. God's wrath. But Jesus. Being connected to him. Being connected to the vine. He's the vine and the father is the vine dresser. Thank you for being our rock. Thank you for being our deliverer. Thank you for being the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you for being the one who saves us. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me, for what you've done for us on Calvary. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name. The Holy Scriptures tells us that true worship is worshiping the Father and Spirit and truth. 12.1 says, True worship is by the mercies of God we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy? What? Holy? What? Holy, pleasing, and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service and our spiritual worship. Thank you, Father, for your mercies and compassions. Lamentations 3, 22, 23 says, through the Lord's mercies, because of his mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great, great is your faithfulness. 
Each moment by moment, we see God's faithfulness. We see a compassionate Savior and Father who shows compassion to those who love and fear Him. Fear, not ooh, but a reverent fear that who He is is awesome. Awesome God. Eternal God. Everlasting God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, the Ancient of Days. Holy God, set the atmosphere, God. Set the atmosphere in each of our homes where you can manifest your presence. What did I say? So you can manifest, show yourself, your presence in our hearts. Thank you, Lord. My soul says you are my portion. Therefore, we hope in you. Lord, you are good to those who wait on you. To the soul who seeks you, you are good. We lift up our hearts. We lift up our hands to God, our Father, who are in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, God. We worship you, God. Did you know calling on Jesus' name alone and faith has the power, has the power to set free those who are being held captive by the enemy? The enemy is Satan. The enemy is Satan. Jesus calls him the thief who came to steal, who's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But you know what Jesus said? He said, I came that we may have life, a more abundant life. Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus, he is a good shepherd. So for those of you who are suffering with anxiety, hopelessness, Helplessness, all kinds of sinful addictions, Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is our Savior from the sins of the world. He is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world through his death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. When we call on Jesus, you know what we get? We get Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? Somebody un unmute and tell me. God with us. God with us. Say it loud and proud. God, God, with, with, us. God with us. Hallelujah. God is with us. He's with us. There are some pastors, preachers, teachers that don't believe that. They don't believe that, but we do. He's with us right now. Our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We get an advocate who petitions the Father on our behalf. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. We get the one who sets us free and delivers us from all evil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. God does his best work when we come together in praise, prayer, and worship. Let's begin to call on Jesus. Jesus. Come on, say it, Jesus. While Liz is putting up the lyrics, just say Jesus. And when you hear me singing, then you can put on mute. Jesus. If you know that there's power in his name at home, just start calling on him. If you're going through something, or even if you're not going through something, call on him for somebody else that's going through something. saints of God on, on the Zoom room. Let those on Facebook. Let those on YouTube. I got a camera up here. Let them hear you. We're calling on you, Jesus. We're calling on you, Jesus. We're calling on you to see us through, Jesus. See us through the darkness, lead us to the truth. Jesus, Jesus, I'm calling on you. Can we mute? 
Let's mute and sing this together. We're going to sing it in the spirit. I'm going to sing it. Liz got the lyrics. Thank you, Liz, for putting the lyrics up for those who on Facebook Zoom can see it and sing along with us. Pastors on the keyboard. Thank you, Lord. Let's call on Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I'm calling out to you, calling on Jesus, oh Jesus, I know you'll see me through, hallelujah. Jesus, but there's one reason that we've all decided to follow Jesus. 
He is the only way, the truth, the life, the only one that came to take away the sins of the world, the only one that can bring us into a relationship with the Father, the only one that can give us eternal life, the only one who's a victorious one, Emmanuel, God with us, the anointed one, the Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the only one through God who he is the word, the word, the word. Through him all things were made. And without him nothing was made that was made. Why have you decided to follow Jesus? <laughs> I've decided to follow Jesus. When Jesus came to me in 2004, he manifested himself to me. He said, he's my father too. Jesus, God has a father. He said, he's my father too. I didn't believe Jesus was God. He said he was God. And God, the father, he came to be about his father's business. But then he was preparing Joel and I, Pastor Joel and I, to be about our father, his father, our father's business. Thank you, Jesus. He gave me a brand new life. He took away my sins. He gave me a new birth. Through Jesus, I have the Holy Spirit. I have decided to follow Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for standing at the door and knock. He know I like to eat, so he said, I come to dine with you, Annalisa. Thank you, Lord. that they worship. But God sent this man to India and his family. He was a missionary. Well, you know what? He was about to be persecuted for following Jesus. The words, I decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Well, they said, well, if I kill your family, will you still follow Jesus? If I kill your wife in front of you, if I kill your children, will you still follow Jesus? Though none go with me, Still, I will follow. So you know what? They killed his family. But you know what? They didn't stop at his family. They said, well, we're going to kill you. This man, this missionary. Oh, yeah, you're going to go through some 
tribulation. You're going to go through some tribulation. We're going through it right now. This man went through it with his whole family. Well, they killed him. They killed this man. They killed the missionary. And you know what? He made a believer out of them. Because they said if this person will watch his whole family die and die, then God must be real. Then there must be a Jesus. Brother Dave, did I get it right? Pretty close. Well, Brother Dave, he'll send you the link. Praise God. But the point is, no matter what happens to us, no matter what we go through, no matter what our sufferings are, we're going to follow Jesus until he calls us home because we have made it up in our minds and on our hearts to follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. While we wait to bring up Pastor Joe for the word that the Lord has given him, God is so, so faithful. God is always faithful. He is always faithful. And we love him so much. And we know that he is real. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last. I can say that with a big old smile. The beginning and the end. Thank you, Lord. You are Alpha and Omega. We topic on our minds yes. at night and then the first topic in the morning Lord is to yes. speak to you to hear from you Lord because yes. you're worthy to be praised Lord we want to put nothing no one before you we thank you Lord that you hold our very breath in your hands as you said in the book of Daniel chapter 5 Lord God we thank you Lord that we are in your keeping in your stead you think enough of us, Lord, to send Jesus to us. So we thank you right now. And we thank you for this opportunity to come before you, to lift up prayers and supplications to you, Lord. We thank you for these things and more. Lord, we're praying for all those in our families, Lord, those who are traveling, those who have to go out and make a living, Brother Johnny and Sister Yolanda, their family, Lord God, others. We're praying for traveling mercies, Lord God, as they go to and from. Lord God, Lord God, wherever your children are, wherever their feet should tread, would you be with them, Lord, in the name of Jesus? Would you cover our daughter, Tavana, Lord, and, and her husband and family, our grandchildren, Lord, who who are taking their a vacation, Lord, from all the work that they do. Cover them, Lord, and bring them back safely in the name of Jesus. We're praying for family members, Lord, who are going through hopelessness, depression, suicidal thoughts. Lord God, and, and addictions. We, we're lifting them up to you for strength in the name of Jesus. We know that you are Jehovah Rapha. We know that you are the great physician, the healer, Lord. So we're asking for healing, Lord. Even though they don't know you, Lord, we're, we're praying, Lord, that you just put it in abeyance. Whatever it is, Lord, that's hampering them, just freeze it in the name of Jesus, Lord, until you get them where they need to be in Jesus' name. Lord God, we pray for healing, but sometimes, Lord, we, we know you do things differently, Lord. You just might freeze something and keep somebody there, and when it's time for them to go home, Lord, let it be a smooth transition, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do, Lord, we, we're not here to tell you how to do your job, but we defer to you in everything. Lord, we lift up Pastor Harriman to you, our nephew and our uh, young man, a young lion, Lord God, who who the devil is messing with, Lord. We lift him up to you for continued strength, Lord. We know he'll over overcome in the name of Jesus because you're in it. Give him strength, Lord, and perseverance. We're praying for my brother Tim, Lord, to draw closer to you. 
Lord God. You're putting some things in front of him, Lord God, that he's got to look to you, Lord God. I love him. Lord, bring him to you all the way in the name of Jesus and protect him, Lord, and his fiance in the name of Jesus. Pray for all those who are healing from COVID, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for healing mercies, Lord, with no negative residual effects, Lord. The strength of God, fearfully and wonderfully made are we, Lord God, that we'll bounce back. Lord, we don't believe in everything that the scientists tell us. Some things, yes, but you always. We believe in you and we believe on you for our strength, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift up Sister Elwanda to you, this little lamb, Lord God, who is tougher than she looks, Lord. Looks so soft and delicate, Lord, but she's got the heart of a lioness. And we thank you for her, Lord. We ask that you bless her, keep her, Lord, and everyone else that's going through trials, Lord. Sister Marsha, Lord God, quiet strength, Lord God. Give her that, that, that stoicness to stay right there where she is, Lord God, and believe on you in all things in Jesus' name. Lord, we're, pre we're lifting up a praise report, Lord, for uh, Minister uh, 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 Carl Fortier's uh, sister-in-law, Brenda Lowe. Lord, her pastor laid hands on her and she was healed. Lord God, I don't know what she was healed from, but it was big enough, Lord God, that they had to talk about it and they had to give you the glory, Lord, and we thank you for that, Lord God, that you said, I'll confound the wise and I'll bring to nothing the understanding of the truth. Lord God, so we thank you for that, that you're still in the miracle business. No surprise to us. We thank you, Lord. You said they overcame the accuser by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So we're going to shout it out, Lord Hallelujah. God, so that you can shout out evil in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for that, Lord God, that we can lift up prayers, as it says in James chapter 5, Lord, to pray. Pray, let the elders pray, lay hands, Lord, and everything yes. else, that you may be healed. The thank prayer you, of faith, you said, shall heal the sick. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, that you thank do you, things Lord. in a miraculous way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. And we lift up our communities to you, Lord, our leaders, our law enforcement people, our, uh, our political pundits, Lord. We lift them all up to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, in keeping with Psalm 33 and 12. Lord God, that says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Yes. Lord, I pray that we'll make you our Lord and Savior yes. for real, not for, uh, uh, for, 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 not, not for political purposes, yes. but for real in the name of Jesus, Lord. And finally, Father, we're lifting up all our children to you, all of our young ones, all of our uh, high school age children, oh, college age children, all those seeking uh, 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 and BAs and MDs and PhDs, Lord, we lift them uh, them up to you. We're lifting them up to you, Lord God. We don't want them to be such critical thinkers that they start criticizing God. We want them in the Word of God at all times, yes. first and foremost, yes. in the name of Jesus. Name and we lift up our little ones to you. All of our elementary school and grade school and PKs, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they'll be protected by the Word of God. Let it saturate their minds that this, uh, that this uh, curriculum that the devil has in the world will not take away the word of God. Cover them, Lord. Everywhere they tread, keep them protected. Lord, we could pray all day, but just these things right now, Lord, we lift up to you and we say thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, everybody. I don't usually take things for granted, but I just believe, we all believe that, and I believe that we're all praying the same thing. Am I right or wrong? You're all right. right. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Praise God. Well, I thank you all for being with us today. I thank you, everyone that helps out. That's what the team is about. Of course, Pastor Annalisa does so much. Well, uh, she's uh, always doing something, always busy, always running around. Um, doing something, working things out, trying to download programs, trying to make sure the word gets out, uh, and you, praying, you, prepping, pruning, practicing, always <laughs> doing apply every P in there. Uh, everything except postponing. She won't postpone anything, especially when it's time to eat. So she does all <laughs> kinds of things. <laughs> the Lord gave me some help with this one, I'm telling you. She's Thank a you, she's a helpful little handful. Look at Praise her. God. She's something else. She's a cutie pie. Thank you, but I God. thank her and I thank you all. Thank God because for you too. what would we do without the uh, uh, hands the and the feet of God? Amen. The body mm, of Christ. Body. That's who we are. You all don't know. You, you say you're Stay coming to here to, to get the word, but we're coming here to serve other people. 
Yes. This is going down in prosperity, you all. This is going to be here long after we leave here. Think of it that way. This is for people that might come to the Lord five, ten years from now. Yes. 20 years from now. They'll say, I remember they said something that, that rang my bell, that resonated in me. Yes. And the Lord will have called us for this time. Thank okay, you, Lord. and when we get back in the building, he's going to bring some more people there. So yes. it's time for us to be ready. Amen. Amen. It's we want to be now. ready. So it's a blessing. Yeah, Amen. Well. I was just thinking a little old joke came across my eyes. And what did it say? It said, uh, uh, what did it say? It said, how did, uh, hmm, which animal is richer, a cow or a bull? And it said, uh, well, of course, the cow, because the cow gives milk. And that old bull, he charges you. Mm, that was right. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. <laughs> I thought that was Come funny. On, <laughs> he charges All you. Right. But I just thought thinking, well, how does that relate to the Lord? Well, aren't you glad the Lord doesn't charge us? Amen. Aren't you glad that his blessings and compassions are new every morning that they fail not? Great is his faithfulness. Aren't you glad Amen. that by grace we've been saved, huh? And Amen. not of our own. Amen. Amen. God doesn't charge us, all right? Thank he you, offers Father. us salvation. Amen. Amen. He ain't like it's that old bull. Gift. He ain't going mm, to charge you, okay? Yeah, all right? That's something Praise to think God. about. Praise so let's God. go to the Lord in prayer. And Father, we thank you again. Thank you for your mercy, your grace. Thank you for your humor, Lord. Thank it you, does Lord. our bodies oh, good, yes, Lord. Lord. And it rejuvenates us, Lord, when it comes from you. Yes. Lord, be with us as we uh, speak this word, and I pray that everyone within earshot of it will accept it. Lord, we'll learn to grow from it, Lord, and we'll learn to tell other people about it because we're telling them about you. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Thank okay. God for laughter. I think it's a gift, too. Amen, amen, amen. You know God has a sense of humor. All you got to do, well, we got to do is look in the mirror, right? You know you got a sense of humor. Hey, folks like us, come on, y'all. Let's not get so serious. We know God has a sense of humor. Some angels be laughing at us, y'all. All right, we're continuing with part two of our series, Finding Your Peace in the Sovereignty of God. That's a mouthful. We began last week, and I mentioned that ever since Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, we've been under duress. Mm -hmm. Amen. We've been under pressure, you all. We've been under discord and certainly disharmony. We see a lot of that going on, too. All right. Mm -hmm. And there's been very little peace in the lives of human beings. We can go back through the history books and we can see all that. Amen. Amen. Very little peace in the lives of human beings e ever since what? I call it the, uh, fall of man. The, the, the the fall of man, the great double cross, okay? That's another word that I sometimes say. It's, uh, uh, ever, ever since that, when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, okay? After that event, sin would become a mainstay in the lives of people. Not only in the lives of Adam and Eve, but in the lives of every man, every woman to come forth since that time. And we can't do anything about that. You can't say you weren't born into sin because you were. Okay, it's just the way it is. Am I right? Yeah. But let's do this. Let me give you all an, an early scripture, an early scripture verse which the Lord threw, uh, threw at me, uh, which attests to this, uh, which is found in Romans chapter 5. I'm going to ask Pastor Annalisa to take us, please, to Romans 5. Verse 19, chapter 5, verse 19. Romans 5, 19 tells us, for as, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Mm -hmm. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Good word. Uh, let's look at it. <coughs> if I can get to it. Uh, <coughs> okay. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many shall be made righteous. And isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. That's the truth, okay? I want you all to know that unrepentant sin works against your peace. All right? Unrepentant sin works against your, pre your peace. And it, it brings with it all kinds of disadvantages. The devil knows that. Through one man's disobedience, many became sinners. So now many would have to go through the trials of, uh, uh, of the, the vestiges of sin. 
and all these disadvantages, many are spoken of throughout the Bible. Watch this. Let's look at uh, another scripture in, in that same chapter, Romans 5, 12. Let's go up the ladder a little bit, Pastor. Tell our viewers what it says in Romans 5, 12. Romans 5, 12 tells us, Therefore, just as through, through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. Mm, 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 thank you. Okay. Um, Paul is speaking, and Paul says here that sin entered, in through, it, it entered through man, which uh, uh, represented by Adam, and then it spread to all men. So sin spreads, just like you spill something and you just gets all over everything. You see what I mean? That's, that's how it is. Because all have sinned, am I right? Mm -hmm. But not only is Paul saying that sin runs rampant uh, uh, due to man's disobedience, but also death runs rampant through sin. All right? So death spread. And remember now, the devil's not playing with you. He's not playing with you. He comes to steal to what? Kill, kill destroy. and destroy. Okay, and we know from the word, uh, Romans 6, 12 said, but the wages of sin is what? Death. Death, okay? So uh, anyway, you look at it, you die physically, you die spiritually, you're separated from the vine, you get withered away. All these different things come from sin, and it runs rampant. As I said many times before, you're born into it. Romans uh, 3.23 says it, right? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But it goes on in chapter two, uh, in verse 24 to say, but you have redemption that is found in who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Redemption through Jesus Christ. Reconciled to Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians it talks about. He reconciles the world to himself. Okay? So, uh, um, it's through his grace. And in Romans 8, Chapter 8, verse 3, it tells us that God sent his own son in the likeness of sin on account of sin. On account of sin. He did it on account of sin. Took on sin on account of sin so that we could be saved. You see what I mean? Amen. So although sin gets on us, friends, guess what? We don't have to let it stay on us, huh? Because we're born into sin, we don't have to stay in that dish. We don't have to stay in that pot of sin. We can jump on out of that thing if the Lord wants us to, if we listen to him, amen? amen? So it'll take you down if you let it, okay? If you let it, it will take you down, and it'll uh, keep you where you are. Just as I said last week when I mentioned that domino theory, the domino analogy, one man failed. He falls, and the other fall, the others fall like dominoes. That's how we all fail to sin, in succession. Well, Amen. that's why this should be a hot topic. This should be a hot topic for everybody, you all. We should be examining these things, okay? We should be looking at this topic, especially today when we are living in the last days. Make no mistake about it. Some people think that we're not in the last days because it's been going on so long and Jesus hasn't come yet. You, they better be glad he's not here. Better be glad he hasn't come yet because there'll be a lot of people left behind. There'll he's be a lot right. of people. He's not time right. yet, but he's Patience. coming. Amen. You, he's coming. And we've come, we've gone over 2 Timothy 3, chapter 3, enough times to know that we are definitely witnessing perilous times. If you know nothing else, you know that we're in perilous times, okay? In many, many forms, it's exhibiting itself. Pastor Alisa read the, the verses for us last week from 2 Timothy 3, uh, verses 1 to 4. And they are even more relevant for people who are alive today than they were in the, uh, for the people in the past. You can, you can just see it everywhere. Every time I turn around, I see something else that doesn't make sense. It's just, uh, it, you become unshockable because of the shock value. You know, it used to be when they said breaking news, everybody stopped eating dinner. But now when they said breaking room, breaking news, you say, <laughs> breaking news, you said pass the carrots, please. And you just, you just keep eating, you know? You just keep eating, okay? Because you keep doing no, what you're going to do because the Bible talks about that. We'll become desensitized mm -hmm. to sin. Young man killed his father, killed his mother. Then he said, oh, well, I may as well go in there and kill my two little brothers. 
this just happened. This is not the one I told you all about the other day. This is a different one. They asked him why did he do it. He said, well, he thought about how his father had mistreated him and was always yelling at him and so forth and so on. And he said, and one day he, uh, did he get drunk? Oh, the boy got drunk. He came in the house. And he said he looked at his father. He just saw him. He decided to shoot him. He shot him. He said, well, I may as well shoot my mother because what's she going to do? May as well. She ain't going to want to be without him. Well, what the kid's going to do? I'm shot everybody. You see what I mean? That's sin. That's under the influence of a demon. That's some, some demonic thinking, okay? That's why we need the Lord. We need to know. We need to know that he's sovereign, and we need to get our peace from him, yes. okay? This is why it's so important that we tell people about this, okay? It's, it's relevant uh, to find peace in this world, okay? So we are, we, we, we're faced with that burden of finding peace in this world. That old song by Timmy Thomas. You all remember that song? Remember Why can't Timmy we live Thomas. together? No more wars, oh, yeah. no more wars, no more wars, just a little peace in this world. You know, why can't we live together? Why can't we live together? We need peace in this world. That, uh, you know, some song just speak a word, and that word is taken from this word, the inspired, Bible. Yeah. We need peace. A, we need to be inspired to have peace. But the only problem is we need real peace, not a short-term peace, not, yeah. not a, a temporary peace. Christ we want peace. long-lasting peace, and you can't get that through anybody but Jesus. When we, uh, when we look for real peace, it's largely vacant in this world. Oh, yeah, it's vacant in this world. It's missing in action. Real peace is MIA. It's missing in, missing in action. Uh, this is a world of smoke and mirrors. You know that, right? You all know that term, smoke and mirrors, meaning that it's a, it's a carefully constructed image. It's a reflection of peace, okay? Uh, uh, just as you witness in a, uh, uh, an act put on by magicians and hypnotists, they give you an illusion. That's what you have in the world when you think about the world's peace. Oh, wow. It's really a farce. The truth is there's only one, one somebody who can provide you with real peace, and that one somebody is God Almighty. Amen? Amen. He's the only one that can give you real peace, okay? And there's only one that, can, that you can go to or go through to get to, get to God, and that's Amen. Jesus Christ, that's the peace. Son of God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Absolute truth. Him himself, okay? Amen. And that right there should tell us where to begin in our quest for peace. Look no further than to Jesus Christ. As I recall, Pastor Annalisa read last week out of John 14, 27. And that was at the very end of our broadcast. I think she mentioned John. I told her, I asked her to mention uh, uh, John 14, 27. I'm going to ask her to bring up, bring up that verse one more time for a reason. We got a little more time in the beginning. I want to just elaborate on something on it while it's fresh in your mind. So, Pastor, can you read that one again? John 14, 27, please. John 14, 27 says, Peace. I leave with you mm -hmm. my peace. My peace. I give to you. I give to not you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, mm -hmm. neither let it be afraid. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, we could go on and on. And when, when Jesus is speaking this word that we need so desperately, you all. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Yes. Okay, he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. See, so Jesus explains that he gives you peace, but he doesn't do it like the world. Okay, okay, I want you all to get that. Not that you fell asleep when we did this last time, but somebody may not have heard it. Um, maybe the Lord just wants me to do it again. But you see, uh, uh, Jesus says, I give you my peace and not as the world gives. You see, we know what happens when the world gives you something. It usually takes it back. <laughs> mm -hmm. You usually won't even get all of it, okay? Um, the world is funny like that. You know, you, when you lease a car or you lease a truck, they tell you get it at a discount price. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it, you've got a big old balloon payment, right, if you want to keep that thing, amen? And then when you look at the interest and in everything that they gave you in the first place, 
was it a deal or a discount in the first place? You see what I mean? Not really. When you factor in the details like wear and tear and, and things like that and the little dings that come on it and people bumping the door and then you got to account for every little bit of it and so forth. Starts, it, it, all those things pile up on you. So you wonder if it was really worth investing in in the first place. But you wanted it and you enjoyed it and it gave you peace. Mm -hmm. Temporary peace for a while. Okay? Uh, uh, and and that's, that's just one thing uh, uh, that the world does. It's just a, a, something to look at uh, because your peace can be affected by different things. And guess what? You still have a big payout at the end. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. Or how about the peace that the world offers with, with things like Social Security? Y'all feel peaceful about that? Huh? Social Security? <laughs> that's a good one, isn't it? Taking money out of your earnings ever since you was a little baby boy, a little teenager. So you got your social security number. They said, hey, don't worry, we're going to give all this back to you. Let's just take this much out. And they take it out and they take it out and they take it out. And finally, in your later years, in your golden years, when they get to those golden years, you find out that there, you find out that there is there's very little social security left, if any. Okay? I, I hate to tell you all that, all you youngsters that are coming, that are coming up. But Social Security, I don't know. They're, they're, they're saying it may not even exist in the very near future. All right? Oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. But see, the world, what I'm, what I'm trying to get to is that, and this is just a couple of examples. You all can look at the spiritual things and other things that, that the world promises you. But to tell you the real truth, the world will promise you all kinds of tantalizing tidbits that offer what seems to give you peace. And it may even give you peace for a time. For a time. For a minute. Temporary peace. Okay? Even your help for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they'll tell you, oh, no, go to this and take this and take this drug and take that drug. It'll take away every pain, but then it'll make hair grow out your eyeballs. And they don't tell you about that, amen? <laughs> so it's always something left, you know. <laughs> There's always something, you know. And But you got to do it. But the point is, if we want real truth, nothing and no one can give you the peace that comes through Jesus Christ our Amen. Lord. That's what I got to get to you Amen. all. Jesus not only gives you peace that is now, but the peace that goes far beyond this earthly realm. It goes far beyond this earthly plane. It extends outwards, upwards, into the heavens and beyond for Thank all you, eternity. That's the peace we get with God. Hallelujah. You, Amen. And that's what Jesus is alluding to in John. That's it. Let's get back to it. He says, his peace is not like the world. I'm so glad it's not Jesus. I'm so glad your peace is not like the world because I wouldn't know who to follow. Okay? Yes. I'm so glad we have real peace in Jesus Christ. But let's look at something else. This is something else we need to talk about. We know that Jesus gives us peace because he's the Prince of Peace. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And if he's the Prince of Peace, and we all should have peace if we are connected to the Prince of Peace. Amen? Amen. So we all are, 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 are afforded peace. That, that makes sense, right? But the fact is, there are many people who claim to be in Christ. And still, they have very low peace. Uh, uh, have you noticed that? There are people that, that say they're in Christ, but then they're still fearful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are people that are in Christ that say they have peace, but they're doubtful and they doubt. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. Like trust. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. There are people that say these things. So let's see what needs to take place in our walks with regard to finding peace in the sovereignty of God. Let's go to Romans 15 this time. Let's go to Romans 15. We're going to stay in Romans for a minute. Let's go to Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, Pastor, 13 please. says, Now may the God of hope, huh. the God of hope, Oh, God of hope, I like it already. Fill you with all joy mm -hmm. and peace and believing and believing that you may abound, abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ah, I like that. That's a, that, that's, a, that's a good piece of meat right there. The that's a nice chunk on your fork, right? Spirit is Amen. The power. I like power that. Power of God. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Lord. Now we're saying something. Well, here in this text of Scripture, Paul is praying. Now he's praying for Christ's followers back in Rome. This is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. They needed this, and he's telling them that. And this mm -hmm. statement is, uh, uh, that Paul is using authenticates what God can and will do in the hearts and minds of every born-again Christian, even right now in our lives. Y'all believe that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That word is for us too. Amen. Amen. He says, as many as who has received him are given the right to be called children of God. Okay. He says that in John 1, 12. So who were born not of the, uh, the flesh, nor the will of man, uh, nor of blood, but of God. So you're born of God. So this applies to you as well. Amen. All right. That is the Lord serves to fill all of us with joy and peace. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank Amen. You, Lord. That's right. He, 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 he extends that to us. He says, I'll give you this peace, this joy, as you believe. Huh? The God of hope fills you with all joy and peace in believing. Thank you, Lord. Huh? That you're going to abound. Amen? Huh? Amen. So uh, just as the scripture says, uh, so we need to get this in our minds. When it comes to attaining peace, it comes from the power of who? says it right there. Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Hope comes to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's like watching a movie. This movie comes to you by our sponsor, the Holy Spirit. He's bringing it to you. He Amen. brings this message. He brings this power to you. Brought to you by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Written and directed by God, okay? Uh, executive producer, Jesus Christ. And by the Holy Spirit. He's bringing you this Working thing. Together. Amen? Thank you, Come on, y'all. When it comes Thank to attaining peace, it comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And we often quote Acts 1-8. That's another one, right? You all know these off the top of your head, I'm sure, by now. It also confirms how the Holy Spirit comes and serves to empower us. Amen? He empowers us as yes. believers. Amen? Amen? And follows the Christ. Pastor, give us that one one more time. How Acts 1-8. Uh, no, don't start singing. But, Just give it to us. <laughs> but you shall <laughs> receive power. That's right. Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, uh -huh. and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea, and Judea mm -hmm. and uh, and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Can I read that again? Read one more time. Praise slow, God. But you Praise. shall receive power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, mm -hmm. and you shall be witnesses to me mm -hmm. in Jerusalem and in all Judea all and Samaria. Judea. And to the end of the earth. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Praise God. See? I see, see they even see through that? technology. I know, I know, I know. You all right? Okay. <laughs> Praise, Praise God. God. <laughs> so Wanda <he's>, Wallace. <laughs> You Sorry shall receive that, power when the Holy Spirit comes upon Praise you. Praise God. Amen. Witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. That means in your hometown. Huh? Praise that means God. if you're a, a missionary across seas, okay? In your home. That means if you're a young man and you're in the military right now, and you know the Lord, huh? You're a witness to me. Amen? Because the Holy Spirit is going to empower you. If, you, if you're empowered, uh, imbued with the power of God that's in you, okay? Thank that's what he's Lord. talking about. You, you are imbued with that power. That means it's given to you. It's flowing through your veins. Thank the you, power Lord. of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Thank if you, you know God is with you, who can be against you? Isn't that Hallelujah. what it says in Romans 8? If, if God be with us, who can be against us? If God be with us and they got a pandemic, who can be against us? If God be with us and a thousand uh, uh, may be fall. fall at your side, Ten are thousand. you going to stand on the word of God? That's what, that's what we're talking about here. Amen. Okay, it's the word of God. If something happens and he allowed it to happen, you don't, you don't uh, tempt the Lord your God. You make every precaution to do the right things according to the word of God. He did give you discernment, didn't he? He did give us a mind to use fearfully and wonderfully made. He did say, take care of yourself. No, you don't go out there and say, watch me stand in front of this truck and watch it bounce off me. No, you don't do things like that. You don't tempt the Lord. You do all you can and you let, but you stand on the promise of God. Yes. Okay. And this is why these scriptures, we have to get in there and chew on them. Just chew on it a little bit. The God of hope. Mm. That's why this is used as a benediction sometimes because you want to end up with it. May the God of hope mm -hmm. fill you with all joy and peace 
Amen. Amen. In believing that you may abound by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's Amen. it. We can go now. See, that's what we've got in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. And that supersedes everything else. There are some people that don't believe that way. I just heard you all talking. I wasn't eavesdropping, but I heard you all having a meeting as I was getting ready for my sermon today. And I heard Pastor Annalisa say there are pastors who don't believe that, the God, that God still uh, works miracles in the yeah, lives of people. So. That's a shame. It's too bad that people don't believe that because they probably never experienced it. You see, and when people don't experience some things, sometimes they're too big or too proud to say, uh, well, I just, it never happened to me. That's what non-Christians do. You know, and that's what non-Christians do because they want to stay in their lifestyle. But we got some Christians that do the same thing, some so-called Christians. It's not to me to, to, to decide if they're Christians or not, if they're saved or not. But you're truly a saved, born again, believing, and God says, uh, uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can go all through the scriptures and use the different contexts and see that God is unchangeable. Why would we limit God? Who am I to say what God can't do and won't do? Who will say that? Okay, mm -hmm. when I've seen him raise the dead, I rest <laughs> my case. Okay, I saw it. Other people saw it. The hospital right. wasn't right after that one. After that prayer went up and that child raised up, that was the end, okay? Lord, I believe the Lord brought the some people to Christ that time. Mm -hmm. I know he did because that was absolutely amazing. It made the news. So again, God does what he wants to do, but people that don't believe it, there's something wrong. You're supposed to be imbued by the power of the Holy Spirit. You mean to tell me I'm going to put limits on what the Holy Spirit can do in me? Of course not. Why have one? Okay, why not just have religion then if you don't have anything else but something to, to, to read? Come on now. They, they told me, my Bible says that the word is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even through the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow. And it's a discern of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. There's no creature hidden from his sight. No creature. That's what it says. Okay? But we all must stand to account for what this word says. So I'm telling you, His word is if true. this is true, then the Holy Spirit of God Come who on. moved into Preach men and had them uh, 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 put this in written inspired. form so that people, the inspired word of God, so that we could gain strength from it. And it's living and powerful. How dare we say that God can't doesn't do today. or can't do or won't do what he did before? We need, there's something wrong with that, you all. And that's why people have to check. You, that's why people have to find their peace in the sovereignty of God. That's why he gave they, us this they, message. Another thing, you can't say God called you out. How did he call you out? Yes, how did God call you out? He stopped talking to you once he called you out? Well, he used my mother. Well, how did he do that if he doesn't do miracles? How did he do that? Mama just woke up and said, boy, you're going to be a pastor? What? How did he do it? Me. <laughs> Come on now. You can't have it one way and then have it the other way. Either we believe on the Lord or we don't. And he's got enough instances in his word and in experiences that we have seen in the lives of people to know that God is absolutely amazing. Our God is absolutely amazing, okay? Amen. I don't know if you all understand, but this requires being filled with peace. What we're seeing in, in verse 13 of uh, Romans 15, what Paul is talking about, uh, it requires being filled with peace, okay? Now, may the God of hope fill you with all peace and joy in believing that you may abound in hope by the wow. power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, saints, it's the Holy Spirit who is also known as the helper, whom Jesus speaks of in, in uh, uh, the book of uh, John. Now, uh, let's go there for a minute. Let's go to John 14, Pastor, and uh, read John 14, verses 15 to 17 for us, please. I just love this word. John 14, this Jesus speaking. Amen. John 14, 15 to uh, 17, I believe you said. Mm -hmm. Says, mm -hmm. if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Huh. If you love me, keep my commandments. And then he says in 16, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth 
whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. All right. Very, very complete. Thank you, Pastor. I asked for 15 to 17, but you gave us 14, too. But I'm listening. I'm listening. He said, if you ask me anything in my name, I'll do it. I like that, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, we know that in 15 uh, uh, to 17, and we keep his commandments. So that's the prerequisite. Mm -hmm. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Now we can talk. Mm -hmm. Do you love me? Will you keep my commandments? Huh? These people that say they do what God says to do, but they're doing something else. They're not keeping his commandments. So that brings in the question if we even love him. If we practice doing wrong, do we, can we be loving God at the same time? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. and, some, some, and some verses articulate that as saying, if you love me, you'll, you will keep my commandments. Okay, so he's saying that since Pastor Alisa read it, but he also says that I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. And he says the spirit of truth whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor it knows him, but you know him. You know See, him. You know something the world don't know. You know him, brother You Dave. know something the world doesn't know. You know something that the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the uh, doctors and the politicians and the uh, whomever, the, world uh, the worldly, world-wise people don't know. You know something spiritual that they don't know, okay? Because you know the Holy Spirit. He lives with you. Okay? And thank you, uh, if I didn't say thank you, thank you for that, Pastor Alisa. Uh, because he's in you. So now here's a little pop quiz. Here's a question in reference to that, that verse with Pastor Amisa just read. Did anybody hear in that, in that word that she read from? She read from 15 to 17. Anybody, anybody see peace in there? Sister Wanda's not in her head. Sister Minister Dora's not in her head. Anybody see peace in there? That's right. It's in there, right? It's in there. Yeah, don't look for it to, to see it in word. You got to look in the spirit to see that peace is all up in there. It's all up in there. See, that's how, that's how you know. That's how you know, Wanda. That's how you know who's talking. Amen. Did anybody see that word? Some people say no. But we heard Jesus say that the Father would give you a helper called the Spirit of Truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right there in verses 16 and 17, right? But I ask you again, uh, uh, if you didn't hear the word peace, you should be saying, yes, I did hear it. Yes, I did, Pastor Joel. I heard peace. And why do we say that? Because if you've got, listen now, if you've got God the Father sending you the helper, who is the Spirit of God, also known as the Holy Spirit, whose purpose is to lead you and guide you into all truth. Listen to me now. Man, don't you know, don't you know that you got peace? Don't you see the peace in that? I don't mean the P-I-E-C-E, -E, I mean the P-E-A-C-E, -E, the peace of God. Amen? Yes, right. right there. Right God. there. Come on now. Thank you don't need 2020 vision to see that peace. Not that. Uh-uh. That's the real peace of God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Uh, you just have to use your spiritual vision to see it. And you say, whoa, there it is. There it is right there. I see it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Come on, Liz. You know, you know we see that. Come on, Now girl. you see it. Huh? Uh, listen, friends. We open our eyes to the things that God puts before us and apply ourselves to his teaching and guidance diligently and obediently, then we will surely have peace. And there's no doubt about that. Okay? If that peace is missing, we ought to check out what we're studying. We ought to check ourselves out. Amen? Amen. No, Pastor? A spirit of fear. What did you say now? Peace, not fear. Oh, peace, not fear? Okay. Okay, I'll take that, Pastor. Isaiah? Yeah, take us to Isaiah, please, and then I'm gonna, I'll be able to close out after this. 26. Isaiah 26 and 3. Close out for that. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace, perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Amen. That's Sister Liz's scripture right there. Sister Liz is raising her hand. Thank you, Sister Liz. And I believe Sister Liz is the one that brought that to my attention one day. I hadn't really thought about it, but Liz started saying it a couple of times that made sense to me. So, see, the Lord speaks in different ways, doesn't he? He sends people your way that will say things and they'll just 
that somehow they'll resonate in you and you just don't forget it. That's one of those scriptures. But Liz brought that up to me. Okay. I think mm -hmm. we were talking, you know, she mentioned that. Okay. So Isaiah 26 and 3. Uh, and saints, I'll leave you all with this. This this is a, uh, it's not a long scripture, is it? Mm -hmm. It's relatively short. I'm trying to get to that again. Isaiah. Uh, 3. You will keep 26 it. 3. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's a it's a relatively short uh, scripture, but like I said, you don't have to. We certainly want to read the whole Bible and keep learning, but God gives you enough to get you get you through your hurdles, doesn't Thank He? Thank you, Lord. He gives you He gives you a complete meal every time you look in His Word. Amen. He gives you the entree, the meal, and we don't give a lot of dessert out in Spirit of Truth, but it's in the Bible, right? He gives you the mm -hmm. whole meal. Amen. We want mm -hmm. you nourished. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so I I, I want to leave you all with this very short but powerful verse of scripture. You'll keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. Mm -hmm. That's what the that's what the scripture is saying. Okay, it affirms that everyone who is in Christ has the opportunity to be at peace. Amen. And not just a portion of peace, right? But, the, but this word tells us that the Lord will keep you in what kind of peace? Perfect. Perfect peace. Perfect peace. That means peace that the world does not understand. Perfect peace means unshakable peace. Thank you. Okay? That's the kind of peace we want to get to. If you're not Thank there, you. you want to get there, right? Thank you. I don't know if we're there, but I know we want to get there where we've got perfect peace in the midst of the storm, amen. Yes, you yes. remember when the when the disciples were on the boat and they, and it was and they were all discombobulated. And Jesus said, "What's wrong with y'all?" He didn't say that, but he said, "You know, peace, be still." And he calmed the seas. You want perfect yes. peace in your situation, okay? Yes. And it says in the scripture, God will keep the person uh, uh, who trusts in Him in perfect peace. Thank you, Lord. He, that means it. If you're trusting in God, you're going to be at peace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's up to the Lord to tell you how much peace you have because you don't know. Amen. Thank you. You can't tell the oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm at peace. He said, yeah, right. <laughs> Never send, a, test. send a bird by your head. Yeah. You start running. No, you're not in peace. You know, <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll send something your way to let you know. And back to the drawing board, right? Another test. <laughs> you know. Wake up one day, you see a spot on your head. You go, oh, man, but now I'm feeling dizzy. Yeah, there goes your perfect peace, amen? Mm -hmm. Peace wasn't perfect, amen? Uh, so uh, uh, this Bible tells us that when you trust in him, guess what? That's one of the things that he uses that says, I'm going to give that man, I'm going to give that woman perfect peace. Thank you, Lord. Perfect peace. Because they believe in me, they trust in me, they're obedient to me, all these things. That, that's what he's saying. So, um, that, um, <clears throat> the Bible is speaking of that wonderful condition, that wonderful position that believers will find themselves in if we simply trust in God. Thank you. Can't get away from Proverbs 3, 5, 6, can we, Terry? Uh, uh, trust the Lord with all your heart. This morning. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him. He'll direct your path, okay? He'll give you that perfect peace. <laughs> Come on, y'all. See, we can just merge these scriptures together, can't we, okay? Yes. But what now? But, but here's a question. We're trusting in God. What does that really entail, saints? Hmm? Trusting in Jesus. The word or, or learning about God uh, to actually be trusting in God. Well, that verse which Pastor Alisa read in, in Isaiah instructs us that our peace comes as a result of trusting the Lord. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And that trust comes as we do what? Set our minds Focus. on trusting God. Mm -hmm. It says whose mind is stayed on you. Okay? 
Yes. That means your mind is fixed on God. Mm. That means everything that happens to you, you try to look to God to see what's going on. Yes. Everything that you want, you try to look to God to see, yes. well, Lord, this is what I want, but Lord, what do I need? Yes. See, you can't make a step without God yes. because your mind is so connected to God. Connected. You can't say, Lord, I want to go on vacation. I want to take off work tomorrow, but Lord, what do you say? Yes. Lord God, it's 1030 at night. I want to go down and get some soda pop, but Lord, uh, are they shooting down there? Lord, is the way clear for me to go before I go? See, your mind Mind is staying on God, yes. not just in some things, but in all when things. Him, huh? Now, him. now you got bank. Now yes. you start. Now you're going to be in perfect peace because everywhere you go, if something happened and the place explodes, you said, take me, Lord, I'm going on home. Yes. Okay? Yes. And if it doesn't, you get back home and you say, Lord, I've got to live another day to yes. be with you. Yes. Lord, I'm not feeling good today, Lord, but I believe that you're going to bring me through this yes. because I can't reach the doctors anyway. They're not answering, Lord. So, Lord, what are you? <laughs> say. You see what I mean? You trust yes. in the Lord, right? You, know I mean? you trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. huh? That's what he's talking about. Thank you. I'm Lord. telling you, he said, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he will. Thank oh, you, yes, he will. Thank think you, about Lord. the things that get, think about the things that we give the most priority to in our lives. What? That's another thing. Hell. Okay. Huh? I don't know where God is on your priority list. Mm -hmm. But I do know that God Almighty is available and able to keep his children, his church, Sorry. his bride in perfect peace. Yes. He's able to do that. But guess what? You, you, we all saying, I'm so glad God is able. <laughs> but, but guess what? So, Because I don't have to do anything. Oh, yes, you do. Trust. <laughs> yes, you do. You're obligated Jesus, to do something too. Amen. Come on. Come on, he said, I set before you blessings and curses. You are obligated to do something too. Amen. So in closing, think about the things that are fixed in your mind, people. And this is going out to all the churches. And oh, some of you are not in church. Think about this, okay? Think about the things that are fixed in your mind to which you give the greatest priority in relation to uh, this verse we read. You give the greatest priority. Think about these things. Keeping what do you give the greatest power priority to daily? Think about the activities in your life that you constantly tend to. Uh, uh, what your mind is on. To deal with. Mm -hmm. The things that you've got your mind on every day. Today I'm going to wake up and do this. And next week I'm going to do this. And I've got a plan to do this. And I need to get busy doing that. Let me do that now. Think of those things and compare them in an effort to see if those habits, if those activities involve God or not. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if so, to what extent do they involve God? Some people place other people above God on their priority list. I would do this, but so-and-so is not going to hear it. I would uh, mention this, but so-and-so won't see me the same way. So you don't mention it, Okay. Those things, right? They put people, okay, at the top of the list. Some people have their beliefs and desires higher than God on their list, okay? Some people put their pleasures above God on the list. Mm -hmm. huh? This is what I like to do. This is what I want to eat, okay? This is where I want to go. This is what I like to hear. This is the type of music I like to see. Or I like to hear. You can't see music. But <laughs> this type of shows I like to see. type of music I like to hear. Okay? And God may be pulling you away from some things that got you tied up, got you broke down, things of the world that you need to get you away from. But we keep doing them because they're high on our priority list. Okay? Oh, that's good. Oh, Amen? That's good. Now, how about this? Some people like certain pleasures. Okay? Some people like carousing. They like being intimate with different people. It's a thrill of the chase, aha! You know, that type of thing. <laughs> the, the thrill of the conquest. Some people believe uh, uh, that their desires have caused them to practice homosexuality. Some people believe that, or, or, or enjoy being trans, okay? Uh huh. Uh, and, and they simply put those values on a higher list than God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. Okay? On a higher... God's all right, but, but don't mess with my value system. 
Okay, yes, what I mean? Yes, yes. That, that, that's what we're talking about. On the values, the priority list. And it gives them peace. They got peace about it. They got peace about it. I know some people that are dealing with homosexuality and they'll bring it up and they'll bring up God all over Facebook. My God is taking care of me and he's all up in my relationship. Hallelujah. How? How now, brown cow? Let me ask you that question. How? <laughs> you put something above God that Sin. God says is an abomination. Sin. And you put it. This, 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 how can our value system be forthright? It may give you peace. You may be at peace with it now. But remember, it's not going to be true and lasting peace. peace. It only serve to bring you down in the end. But God says, I have my hands outstretched to you. If you want the truth and you want true peace, come to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. For all of us, whatever it is, I just use a few examples, but whatever it is that's, that you've got on your priority list that's higher than God on the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said, you, you keep me, in, you trust in me. Keep your mind stayed on me, and I'll give you perfect peace, my friend, if you really want to know perfect peace. Mm -hmm. But God will bring us up. He's willing to bring us up out of the pit if we enlist his peace, his sovereignty. Amen? Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind among other desires that will serve to, to help the unsaved as well as the saved in finding your peace in God's sovereignty. So God willing, we will continue this next week. So plan on being here for part three, if God allows it, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now to those of you who do not know the Lord, oh yes, it's time. It's time to get to know him. Um, hmm. You may not even want to, but you need to. Amen. For your own good. Okay? God uh, sent his son so that you could be saved. We're headed toward the end time. We're spiraling. We're going faster than a comet, I believe. We're moving so fast. We don't know how fast we're headed toward the end time. But God sure does. And you need to know him. You need to know Jesus in your life. All you need to do is accept him. Accept Jesus into your life today. Ask him in faith, believing that he is God. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? I'll tell you what you've got to lose. An appointment in hell. You'll lose that if you walk with the Lord. Amen. You won't have to burn when you leave here. Because you either go to hell or you go to heaven with the Lord. There is no in between. Okay. He doesn't send you to hell. You make the choice. But now, right now, you still have a choice to be with the Lord. Somebody who can uh, remake you. None of us are perfect. We've all got problems. Even after you're saved, you still got problems, and God is going to help you. He's going to remake you. That's what being reborn is about. But you first have to accept Him. Are you ready to do that? If so, pray this prayer with me right now in sincerity. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I repent my sins to you. I believe that you are God. You died for us, and you were raised from the dead. Would you come into my life and be my Savior? Would you guide me through this, Lord? I want the peace that only you can give me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer with sincerity of heart, you are now a child of God. They can't take that away from you, okay? You're in, you're in the ballpark. You're in the club, okay? Now all you have to do is get yourself a, a Bible and get indoctrinated into a Bible-based church. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let him tell you, let him show you, let him teach you, as we were talking about in the book of John. He's going to come along, and your priority list is going to change. That's what's going to happen, okay? God's going to come along, and he's going to shore you up. He's going to shore you up. He's going to change and transform you, amen? Let him do it. Let him do it. He knows what's best for you. He's going to change some things that, that you've done in your life that you're not proud of. You know what you did. We all know what we did. You know how you feel. You know what you've done when nobody else was looking. You know the lies you told. You know the things you thought about.
God's going to take care of all those things. And you're going to feel so much better when he finishes with you. We all will. Amen. So uh, we're going to pray a prayer, a deliverance prayer, and then I will let you all have your evening, your day, whatever's left of it. Lord, we thank you and we ask you to take these things out of our lives. Blasphemy, obscenity, profanity, coarse talking, critical spirits, spirits of jealousy, coveting, envy, murmuring, gossiping, no places for, it in the, for them in the church. Remove selfishness, greed, and gluttony. Take these things out of us. Pride, rebellion, stubbornness, prejudice, racism, hatred, unforgiveness, unrepentance, spiritual blindness, fear, confusion, contentions, resentment, depression, and anxiety, Anything, uh, 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 any psychoses late, uh, that doctors use, Lord God, take those things away from us. Revenge, superstition, uh, procrastination, complacency, help transgender children, remove apathy, lying, stealing, fraud, mental abuse, sexual abuse, child spousal and elder abuse. Lord, help these people on the streets that are uh, both the ones that are robbing older people and the ones, Lord God, the older people themselves. Uh, uh, help us with those things. Remove domestic violence from our communities, Lord. Remove murder and abortion, suicide, self-mutilation, selfish ambition, addictive spirits, spirits of mental illness, infirmities, physical impairments, discouragement. Lord, let us be encouraged in you. Remove uh, uh, the act of uh, attempting to mock God, superficial faith, um, conceit, fence straddling, teetering, tottering, uh, not uh, being complete in our, our in our obedience to the Lord. Remove compromising Christianity, casual Christianity. Let us be hot or cold for you, Lord, preferably hot. Remove satanic cult, divination, witchcraft, voodoo, uh, uh, the use of Ouija boards, uh, seances, psychics, fortune teller, tarot cards, uh, tea leaves, crystal balls, astrology, anything rated, uh, um, anything uh, in the occult, Lord God, remove those things from us. Yes. Homosexuality, bisexuality, adultery, fornication, things that are now mainstream, things that are accepted in society, Lord, let them be averse to us in the name of Jesus. Yes. Remove incest, cross-dressing, pornography, and its lures, uh, immorality, sexual immorality, gambling, doubt, division, hindrances, distraction, unbelief, rejection, yes. cyberbullying, animal cruelty, desecrating the land, and other things, Lord. You know those things. We can't cover them all. We ask you to remove them from us in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Now, finally, Lord, I pray for everyone who, uh, who has uh, tuned in today on YouTube, those on Facebook, Lord God, our families, our friends. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus to come closer to you. We pray that someone will give their lives to Christ today. And Lord, finally, our Zoom crew, our Spirit of Truth Church crew, that little Danielle and everybody around. I'm just looking at the photos here, little Laudry. Look at them, look at the beautiful people. Lord, bless them. Bless them, Lord, to be strong. Bless them to uh, persevere. Lord, give us a heaping helping of your hospitality. Get us stronger than we need to be, Lord God, as we continue to walk toward you. Bless them, Lord, to you, the Most High God, who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly greater than anything we could ever ask or imagine. According to the power working through us, Lord, you are the power. We thank you in Jesus' name, and we all say amen. Amen, everybody. God bless y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.